Centennial Conference game. Swarthmore with a record of 6-4-3, and three, but 1-3-1 one, and one in the Centennial Conference and fighting for one of those six playoff berths. Meanwhile, F&M 8-1-4, 4-0-1. Well, let's get to the starters. First of all, for Franklin and Marshall, the keeper will be the veteran, the senior Sam Farrell from Severna Park, Maryland. Leading scorer is Oscar Horowitz from Glen Rock, New Jersey. He's a junior. Matthias Arbelize is a first year from Westfield, New Jersey. Philip Manos is a junior. He's a local product from Lower Merion High School. Jordan Samuels, the defender from originally from Cape Town, South Africa, went to the Hill School in PA. Ethan Senatore will be one of the defenders. He's originally from Cazanza, Italy. Isaac Mintz is another one of your defenders. He's a sophomore. Shay Adamson, a midfielder from Allen, Texas. Joshua Slager, a senior from Washington, D.C., and Koa Kalabi who is a sophomore from Cary, North Carolina, and a, and a very dangerous offensive uh, player. For the Garnets, it'll be Caleb Ehrenhaf, the junior keeper from Washington, D.C. He is, he is in goal. Leo Heck, the veteran, uh, the midfielder, the senior, from Princeton Junction, New Jersey. Antonio Caligari, he's a junior from Rutherford, New Jersey. Stathis Kalathias, he'll be a key member of the, the midfield. He's from London, England. Freddie Lynn, up top, junior forward from Upper Arlington, Ohio. Oliver Claxon, who's just been so solid this year, the defender, the junior from Lexington, Massachusetts. Matthew Lorig, also another solid defender, a junior from Crofton, Maryland. Sean Nolan, the quarterback of the defense, the center back, the senior from Baltimore, Maryland. Jackson Haynes, a first-year player, and he's been an outstanding one for Swarthmore. He'll also be one of the center backs. Brandon Cramblett is a junior. He's a forward from Mountain View, California. Toshiro Kenny is a first-year player from Herndon, Virginia. And that, those are your starters for both teams. A couple key players sidelined for Swarthmore, Oliver Garcia and Noah Perlman. So that'll lessen a little bit Coach Eric Wagner's rotation, but uh, still a deep team going up against a very talented Diplomats squad. There's Nolan, 14, an excellent passer from out, outside of the back. Swarthmore in the white uniforms, and it'll be the Diplomats in the blue. Boisterous crowd here as F&M looking, looking to get a run up there. Aaron Haft, and he's interfered with, so it'll be a free kick going the other way. That was Kalibi, 34. Again, a guy we're going to be calling his number quite a bit. Kalibi with two goals and three assists on the season. Again, also up top, Horowitz, you, you have to watch number five. He's been very dangerous. And cleared out of there. Caligari, can he get through? He's got a couple defenders to beat, but he still stays on the ball. But that was a nice defensive play by 33, Joshua Slager. There's great hustle by Kalathias. Swarthmore only has four games counting this one left, and not saying that the Garnet have to win them all, but certainly going to have to get a, a lot of points 
and we'll get to the, the different standings and, and everything like that. Connor Amdurko and Sean Lipschutz, two players that are out today for the diplomats. Our officials today in the middle, Jeff Pansiera, Nico Lopez, and Timothy Esposito on your line. There's Freddie Lynn, guy that can create a lot. Lothmore still trying to keep possession. Nice back pass by Lynn that time. But cleared away. So a little early pressure here. That was cleared away by Nick Pine, number 35. So it'll be Ethan Senatore with the free kick and he'll go really short to Jordan Samuels. Halibi there, you see his moves, you see 34, very, very dangerous, does a real nice job switching fields. That's to Isaac Mintz. Back to Slager. Slager gives him a lot of good ball control there. Oh, he's going backwards and Freddie Lynn having the pressure at that time, and Farrell had to boot it out. Arbalai's chased it, but it'll be a goal kick for the Garnet. Caleb Ehrenhaft, the junior keeper, gets it out. A lot of pressure being put on now by F and M. And that ball goes out of bounds, so it'll be the diplomats on the throw. So Franklin and Marshall putting on some early pressure here. Mintz played it back. Going all the way across the field to Samuels. One thing about F and M, F and M is going to use every bit of the field and really spread things out. Right now, it's a little bit congested. No one there with the head ball, and they're saying that Swarthmore was jumping in on that, so it'll be a free kick for the Diplomats. Jay Adamson lining it up. Just in midfield, and he'll pass back to Senatore. Halibi. Working in tight corners is Swarthmore. There's Leo Heck. He cannot control it. There's Halibi. He's very, very dangerous. And finally cleared out by Caligari. Halibi tries to make the turn that time, but it's off Lurig, so it'll be the first corner kick of the game. Philip Manos with the kick. That's a long one. Claxon will let that go out of bounds. Teams still kind of feeling each other out here. There was a push that time from the back. That was on 33, Joshua Slager, so it'll be a free kick as Leo Heck lines it up. Back to Nolan. Now, a lot of teams have let Nolan take it out by himself, but it looks like F&M's not going to do that. They're... They're putting up some high pressure up top. Horowitz up there. Manos up there. 
So it's not going to be easy. Oh, that was a nice touch by Caligari that time. What a pass. Calathius looking to go inside, and oh, Caligari got a head on it. But Sam Farrell was able to get there. Antonio Caligari, who has two goals on the season. Again, a little pushing here. It's pretty physical right now between these two teams. Pine, 35, lost control. Caligari again. There's Kenny. Real impressive first year player, number 20 has been for the Garnet. That pass had a little zip on it back to Nolan, didn't it? Colasius, he's got some room. Cramblet, Cramblet one time zip, but right there is Farrell. So again, some nice work. Working that right flank by the Garnet. Farrell, who began his career at Division I Radford. This is his uh, second season with Franklin and Marshall. Freddie Lynn. Freddie Lynn does a good job of coming to the ball, getting himself open. Haynes. Oh, nice through pass there. But here come the Diplomats. Long shot in there that time by Philip Manos. And Aaron Half equal to the task. Haynes on the outside. Couldn't control it. Still the dips. And nice job by Haynes as he let that ball go out of bounds as Manos, number nine, was battling it, battling him for it. I think the keys in this game is going to be trapping the ball because there is just very little space these guys have. The, the better they can keep it close to their body, because they're not going to have a lot of room. And just as I say that, here comes Swarthmore. Kenny is battling for it there. Kenny's still battling, and he battled a little too hard that time. as he took down Arbalize. Farrell with the big kick. That's Matthew Lorig. He's had a great year for Swarthmore, number 12. Pine kicked that in there, and Haynes had to head it out because Horowitz was right there on the doorstep. Adamson still with the ball. Adamson and Freddie Lynn coming back and doing a great job defensively to steal that ball. Again, tight corners. Galathius keeps the ball in. Senatore now try, trying to go long ball to Samuels. Tell you what, the pace of this game is very fast. Jordan Samuels on the throw. Oh, they're calling it a foul throw that time. You don't see a whole lot of that. So now it'll be Haynes, or excuse me, Lorig. Boy, 
every ball is challenged. You, you, you saw that time. Horowitz challenged Nolan, but I think he challenged him too, too much. He just called for the foul. Jeff Pantiera talking to Horowitz there. 32-56 left in a scoreless first half in, in a game where the pace has been very fast both ways. Flavius. Look at the pressure. There is, uh, there's Hecht. Hecht working his way out there. Hecht to Calgary, and he shoots just wide. So Antonio Caligari, who has uh, been a real threat here in the early going, he had the goal in Tuesday's 1-1 tie with Penn State Abington, and he's looking to build off of that. Framblet. I, I think the key so far has just been the high pressure that we've seen from this uh, Franklin and Marshall team. They are they are making it very difficult for the Garnet to get the ball out of their defensive end. And that ball a little bit too far. Manos couldn't chase it down. But despite the high pressure, it's been Swarthmore that has had the better of things so far. Swarthmore leading uh, in shots, three to one. Freddie Lynn. Tell you, if you're Swarthmore, you have to watch number seven, Caligari, who is, uh, who's made some really good runs. Horowitz tried the one touch at that time. There's Caligari. Keeps control. He's got Freddie Lynn. Is he onside? No, he is not. Good job by the Diplomats' defense as they, they pulled up. And that was a pretty easy call there. So it'll be Farrell on the free kick. And he's got quite a foot, so... Still with the Diplomats, Horowitz with his back to the goal, trying to make a turn, but he was double teamed. Excellent job by Lorig because Horowitz had the, has the ability to play with his back to the ball, make that turn. Lorig said, no way you can do that this time. Look at this pressure by the Diplomats, and it's going to be a corner kick. That is just relentless pressure. It's going to be Jordan Samuels on the corner. There is a lot of traffic right in the goal with the end swinger. And that ball goes by. 
Haynes for Swarthmore went up to head the ball, but it was a little bit over over him, and the ball goes out, so it'll be a goal kick for the Garnets. This is an incredible pace that these teams are playing. Don't know if they'll they'll be able to keep this pace up for the whole game. Caligari to Kenny. You know, Kenny can beat people one on one. He does a nice job holding it there. And again, Calathius, he was on side. They didn't call him off. But Farrell off his line quickly and gets the ball. Samuels, he's been active so far. Stolen by Hecht inside midfield. Calathius, will he switch fields? No, he goes back to Hecht. Heck now to Kenny. Kenny can take that shot. He's got a wicked shot. Didn't get much on that one. And Farrell with the routine save. I'll tell you what. Great transition by Swarthmore. Had several good breaks here. And it'll be a free kick. That foul looked like it was on Heck. So Shea Anderson over the ball. I don't know if he'll be the one taking it. I do know one thing. That wall has to move back. That is not 10 yards. Anderson should make them count. Now they're going back a little bit more. Watch out for Senatore. He's in the back there. I'm not sure anybody's marking him. Harwitz tried to get a foot on it that time. Fanned on it. Cramblet kicks it out of harm's way for the moment. Haynes. And what a battle there. And it's going to be the Garnet on the free kick. Well, the key is once Swarthmore gets it <laughs> out of its defensive end, the Garnet have been very effective knocking the ball around. And we have a stoppage of play here. I don't know if the Calathius has some blood there or. Kato Hakino ready to come into the game. First year player from Seattle, Washington. So Galathius, who's <laughs> done yeoman work early on here, 25 39 left in a scoreless first half. Haynes will line up for the free kick. It's interesting because Horowitz, number five, with seven goals on the season, he's so dangerous. And it looks like Swarthmore, aware of, aware of the fact that he, he's so good around the net, is not exactly double teaming him, but making sure they have an off-ball defender in the vicinity of, of him. So it'll be Isaac Mintz all the way on the far side with the throw. Look how tight everything is here. <laughs> Neither team giving the other too much space to operate. That's what I'm saying. You, you wonder if this pace can come. How about Kenny with the moves? But that final one was blocked by Slager, 33. Manos.
Nolan lines that one up. Freddie Lynn goes for the head. Caligari, a ball still in. Caligari, how about that to Freddie Lynn? There's a great trap. Look at Lynn with the ball control by Freddie Lynn. Ah, we have an offside there. All the way on the left side, Hakino. But if you're Coach Eric Wagner, you kind of have, you have, not kind of, you have to like the way your team is uh, working the ball around. Two reserves ready to come in for the Diplomats. Michael Desmond, a first-year midfielder, and Miles Ryan. They're getting ready to enter the game. Oh, that time could have been dangerous. Kalibi that time. Horwitz. Look at that. He, <laughs> he was trying to pass that ball to himself. How about that play? Kalibi, look at him. He went down. No foul on Nolan. Play on. And the two subs that we had mentioned about coming in. Nick Pine will come out, as will Philip Manos. Or excuse me, no, that's not, that's um, Arbalize is coming out. That's a nice play that time by Isaac Mintz as he gets it up. Manos. He was trailed by Lorig, and that ena enabled Haynes to make that clearing kick. Hecht wins the battle. And a big clear that time by Senatore. So it'll be the Garnet on the goal kick. 22.07 and counting in a scoreless first half. Blocked by Nolan that time on the shot by Horwitz. So it'll be a corner kick. As Jordan Samuels, we saw that this will be the second one of the game. He has that end swinger in there. There are some big bodies in there. You got to watch 27, Shea Adamson. He's running in now. Oh, and Adamson at the far post that time couldn't keep the ball in, so it'll be a goal kick. I think the story of this first half so far has just been the pace. I keep saying they can't keep playing at it, but they continue to do it. Mintz got his first head on that ball. Horwitz looked to go back, but Lorig has it. And that'll still be that'll be the diplomat's ball. Samuels on the throw. Look at that. One on four that time, and Adamson still was able to get it back. Nolan. Hakino. Here comes Caligari looking for some room, but Hecht has it now. Hecht does a good job, but it loses possession. And they'll go back to Sam Farrell. Freddie Lynn for Swarthmore looking to put pressure. Here comes Horowitz. And again, he forces a corner. It'll be the third of the game. The 
Diplomat's putting a lot of players right in that goal. And we have a stoppage of play here. Make a little warning, just, hey guys, got to cool it in there. There are a lot of bodies next to each other. Here come the end swinger from Samuel. It's a little bit shorter, and Haynes gets to it and clears it away. But not totally out. <laughs> I think Slager got a little more of that than he wanted to. Matthew Lorig, who Eric Wagner was saying in, in our talk uh, yesterday, how, just how impressed he's been by his play this year. Again, there was a push that time as they were going up for the head ball, so it'll be a free kick for the Garnet. Haynes will bring it out. Clockmore with three shots on goal compared to just one for Franklin and Marshall. Hakino working it out, and that ball's now put to the right flank, but kicked away by Nolan. And again, they, they don't want to give five Horwitz any opportunity around the goal to handle the ball. Nolan with the big header out of there, but really nice control by Adamson there. Good job by Heck. And Hakino kicks the ball out there as Adamson had some designs on going on goal. There's Adamson inside, kicked away by Nolan again. Framblett, Freddie Lynn taken down by Samuels. And we may have a card here. Yep. Jordan Samuels gets the game's first yellow. Seventeen twelve left in a scoreless first half. Cleared out again by Adamson. He's got a big foot, doesn't he? Horowitz trying to go at it with Haynes there on the right side. Slager in there. Oh, Kalibi that time with the head ball over the crossbar. That's a nice play. We told you how dangerous Kalibi is. Substitutions in the game, Dean Chong and Bless Kumushabe for Slothmore. I see Kenny out. Did we not, did we not pick up the other player out? I think it may have been Cramblet. Kumu Shabe is a guy that, again, every time we see him, he puts a lot of pressure on the defenses. He, he certainly, number 16, is certainly one of uh, Slothmore's better one-on-one -on -one players. By the way, Calathius who had some medical attention, looks like he's ready to come back into the game. There's Tumo Shabe, and that ball goes out of bounds on Senatore. Calathius back in. 
for Cato Hakino, who, who gave some pretty good minutes in, in limited time. Ball cleared out. Haynes on the header. May have had time to settle it. There's Nolan. Calathius kept that in, and so did Lorig on the ball. Freddie Lynn may have gotten away with a little push there. Caligari to Lynn. Lynn, he's got Chong helping him. There's Chong. Chong looking for some help. Still looking, has to go back. And Claxon couldn't control. Here come the diplomats. Nolan. And getting right there was Adamson that time, but didn't get a whole lot on it. As here comes Claxon. Look at the transition. Are they on side? No. Looks like Franklin and Marshall might be using a, an offside trap because they have gotten Swarthmore several times on that. By the way, Hakino ready to come back in soon. And the Torre goes back. There's Horowitz. Horowitz with Haynes. Horowitz looking to buy some time. Goes now. And there's outstanding play by Swarthmore to clear that ball away. That was Claxton, Claxton making that defensive play. I think we had an offside call there. Nolan now will take it out. We've seen games where Nolan didn't see a defender. Tomashabe, and I, I think they're saying that he took down the player. And Senatore's down, and he looks like he's hurt. Tomashabe is making his case, but unsuccessfully. And Ethan Senatore is down. 6 1, 160 from originally from Cosenza, Italy. I'll tell you, if he's unable to go, that would be a tough break because he's been very, very active here in this first half. A scoreless first half with 12.47 left. Just a, a beautiful day for soccer. Seventy two degrees and sunny here at Swarthmore. Aquino back in the game, Caligari out. Caligari had some really, really nice runs early on in the game. So it'll be Adamson who's got a big foot on this free kick. Miles Ryan, number 23, into the game also for Franklin and Marshall. Ryan, a first-year player from a local product, New Hope, PA, Notre Dame. Chong's defending there. And again, Kalibi. May have had more time than he thought he did. He kind of rushed that and did not get much on it, but 
as we said, 34 can put a lot of pressure. Joseph Ayulop coming in for Swarthmore. First year player from Middletown, Delaware. And he comes in for Freddie Lynn, who just did a lot of running. Samuels on the head. Nolan kicked it away after Desmond 14 did a bicycle kick. By the way, this game is pretty physical today. Every ball is being challenged, and that ball is kicked out by Samuels. That's nice pressure by Tumo Shabe. Hakino on the back pass. Lorig. And I eloped that time, but <laughs> the reason he was almost open, they're calling that he pushed off that time and going for that head ball. So it'll be a free kick for Sam Farrell and the Diplomats. Swarthmore more than hanging around with the number 18 team in the country. Nice pass on the outside to Desmond. Desmond again. Horowitz trying to make the turn. Horowitz still has it. He has a lot of white shirts around him. Trying to make the turn. It's blocked. Looked like that was Lorig who got that block. But see how dangerous Horowitz is? There were three white shirts around him, and he was still able to get his shot off. Still not cleared. By the way, Nathan Schlesinger, number 21, into the game, too, for FNM. Adamson couldn't get his head on that. And Lorig had to kick it off Philip Manos. Relentless pressure in this defensive zone by Franklin and Marshall. I think they called another foul throw there. Manos on the throw. Now nope, they're, they're going to give it to Nathan Schlesinger. Owen Sobel, number 11, coming into the game for Horwitz. Horwitz gets a breather. Coach Dan Wagner going very deep to his bench here. Nice head out of there by Nolan. How many head balls has Nolan gotten to beating players to the ball? Lessinger again. He's got that long throw. Desmond out there near the goal. You've got to watch him. Haynes with that head ball. And Mintz could not keep it in, so on the far side, it'll be Claxon on the throw. Ayulope. Trying to get some steam. Here comes Calathius. Takes it to the center. Oh, inside there. No offside. That was a good chance that time by Hakino. Or excuse me. That was six, Dean Chong. Apology. Kino was right behind him. Schlesinger. There's Samuels. He's been solid in the first half. Pearson with the pass. And how about Haynes on that defensive play? It was a big one because Sobel was looking to go on the goal. And again, that one was cleared out. So Sobel, 11, in his brief time here, has uh, caused some trouble for this Swarthmore defense. 
Oh, great job by Ayolo, but he couldn't keep possession. Great pass. Sobel, Sobel, one times it. Blocked. He gets it again. Inside and again blocked by Lorig. As Kalibi was right in front of the goal and Matthew Lorig was there to block it. Instead, it'll be the fourth corner kick of the game for the Diplomats. Philip Manos will be taking it. 25, Jake Rosenfeld. 17, Adam Green. 18, Jack Norrie into the game. Koa Kalibi out is one of the players out, and I don't think Swarthmore, Swarthmore will mind that too much. Pearson with the end swinger. And that time, just into the game, Jack Norrie couldn't get a lot on that. Norrie, a sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Again, when you're heading the ball and you're moving backwards, it's very hard to get any kind of accuracy on it, and Norrie was doing it that time. Here comes Hakino. He's been really active off the bench today. Tumushabi now chasing it. Tumushabi didn't quite get to it. And then he was called on the trip that time as Ian Kagan came out with the ball. But that shows how dangerous Bless Tumushabe is. Uh, puts just a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. He's 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 so good, too, in tight spaces. Here comes Green. Green, Pearson, or Desmond, I mean. Hakino. And that's kicked out of bounds by Isaac Mintz. Leo Hecht, right around midfield. Tumo Shabe trapped the ball, took a shot. Ayalope running for the ball. But job well done. Cleared away by Jake Rosenfeld. Again, so much pressure by the Diplomats. Oh, that time Desmond tried to go back, and Lorig read it perfectly. Calathius. Here comes Claxon. You know, Claxon makes some calculated runs, but he's using those one to do it. And you don't see Claxon get caught out of position. Uh, Adamson was fouled on that one. Are we going to get a card here? Yes, we are. On Calathius. Clock stops at 3.47 left here in a scoreless first half between Swarthmore and Franklin and Marshall. Shea Adamson, who has had quite a first half, getting ready to line up this free kick. Could that ball get through? Oh, and it was hit that time by Nathan Schlesinger, who kicked the ball wide, but that was a good chance for him. Aaron Haft on the goal kick. Haynes was 
able to clear that, and it, it's a good thing because Franklin and Marshall had some numbers, including number 18, Jack Norrie. Schlesinger on the throw. You can see he can get that near the goal mouth. This is a dangerous situation. Ball right there, but Caleb Ehrenhaft diving on it. Schlesinger is going to put a lot of pressure on Swarthmore with those throws. They tried to go to Claxon, but that ball is out of bounds. So it'll be Nore on the far side. He gets it in quickly. Shot just wide that time by Isaac Mintz. Swarthmore certainly used some reserves in this first half, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> Dan Wagner, Franklin, and Marshall has used several subs, and, and, and with this kind of fast pace, you need it. We'll see what kind of, if that'll pay any dividends in the second half. Kagan got it back to Farrell. What a foot Farrell has. That's an excellent head ball that time by Sobel. Aaron Haft will keep it there. He's got Lorig if he wants him, but yeah, he'll pick it up himself. Just 115 left in a scoreless first half. It's been a good one. Good boot that time. And again, Kagan 3 just got his foot in that because Ayulope had designs on maybe going in on goal. Good anticipation that time by 22 mints, but he wasn't able to keep control of it. But he did anticipate, did a nice job with the pass. Stolen by Lorig. Lorig making a run now. Lorig going down the right, steps over the ball, but Adamson eventually got possession of it. Stoppage of play here. Jeff Pansira. Telling Eric Wagner, hey, tell you guys, just calm it down. Let's keep it calm. This has been a scoreless first half, but both teams had chances, had some nice runs, and the pace has just been incredible. That's Calathius. And that'll be it as they're counting it down. Well, we're through the first 45 minutes. Now we had no goals, but this was some very good soccer on both sides. Neither team giving the other a whole lot of room to operate. And it's been a fast-paced half. So after one, we're scoreless. Stay tuned, and we'll be back for the beginning of the second half.
Welcome back. Mark Narducci here as we begin the second half at Clothier Field between Swarthmore and Franklin and Marshall. We are scoreless. We talked about the fast pace of the first half. A couple of the stats. Franklin and Marshall has outshot Swarthmore 11 to 5. Here's another key one. Five corners for FNM. Zero for Swarthmore. Six fouls apiece. There's been one yellow card apiece. We talked about Swarthmore being drawn off sides. Four offside calls on Swarthmore compared to one to Franklin and Marshall. Three saves for Sam Farrell and of FNM and one for Caleb Bear and half of Swarthmore. So if you're Swarthmore, I mean, and we'll get into this more in the second half, but it's almost imperative that the Garnet come out with, with some semblance of points here because there are only four Centennial Conference games left. There are only six teams will make the conference tournament. As of now, Swarthmore is eighth with a one three and one record but we'll get more more into that as here we are beginning in the second half it'll be swathmore's ball Tough break for um, Franklin and Marshall. Ethan Senatore, who had such a strong first half, has his foot propped up on the bench. It does not look like he's going to be able to come back. That will be a big loss for the Diplomats. Here comes Swarthmore in the white uniforms. Kenny. Calathius, who had several good first half runs, and he tried it again, but that ball was intercepted by Ian Kagan. Jackson Haynes kicked that one out of bounds. Claxon with the intercept, and it's a good thing he did because 34 Koa Kalibi was not that far from the goal and was not marked at that time. Kalibi had some dangerous uh, runs in the first half. I think the whole key in this second half is going to be, can, can both of these teams keep up this frenetic pace? Franklin and Marshall even more so because the Diplomats were, were sending a bunch of high defenders, making it very tough for the defense of Swarthmore, getting, getting the ball and starting the attack. That is Jordan Samuels, as he's going to come up now and, and take the throw. Of course, Samuels had a, had a couple of good corner kicks, too, so you want to try to limit those opportunities. And remember, Schlesinger, who came off the bench, has that great throw. There's Kalibi. Blocked that time by Kenny, and uh, Mintz just has to go back to his keeper, to Farrell. Nolan with the head ball. Caligari. Calathius. But cleared away by 23, Miles Ryan. So it'll be Lorig on the far side with the throw for the Garnet. Early stages in the second half. 
That ball's kicked out of there, and again, Kagan clears it away. He did not want it to go out of bounds. It would have been a corner kick, so he cleared it away. And that was cleared away that time by Mintz. Mintz has been so solid today. Again, cleared away by Kagan. Every ball is contested today. There's, there's just been so little room to operate. Here comes Horowitz and Haynes not messing around, just gets that ball out of bounds. And how about how quickly Franklin and Marshall <laughs> gets it right back in? And we had an offside that time. Don't know if that was Kalevi on the right side, but either way, it's going to be a free kick for the Garnet. No one who's <laughs> already run several miles here today, it seems. Laura tried to head that ball in. How about Kalathias keeping it there? Good possession that time by Kalathias, and he has it again. He's going to chip to Caligari. Caligari got it. And Farrell is called for the foul, and they're, we're, we may see a card here. Not may, we are. That's the second card. For the Diplomats, Swarthmore has one as well. I guess Farrell figured he had, had to <laughs> intentionally foul that way, but either way now, this is not a bad uh, chance for the Garnet. It's a lot of congestion around there. Nolan is lining things up. This year, Sean has a goal, and he has it on, on a free kick. Yeah, they have to walk off that 10. That wasn't even close. Anyone that knows or has heard me do the games, that's always one of my pet peeves. Now, Freddie Lynn is, like, going toward the far post, and nobody's on him. No one with the shot just over. That's a good idea, though. You know, some teams might try to get cute and pass in that area. You're too close to the goal. You've got to take a shot at it. Claxton gets it out. Claxton again on the throw. Trying to go all the way up to Freddie Lynn, but there was Mintz getting his head on it first. Molinos. Stolen by Hecht. Leo with the long pass. Can Freddie Lynn run it down? Freddie Lynn with Ryan the beat. Freddie Lynn. Cramblet. Colathius. He'll cross it in. Lynn can't get to it as he's at the far post. But again, these are the kind of runs that Swarthmore had in the first half as well. I 
I think Swarthmore's defense has done a really good job of not giving Oscar Horowitz number five and Koa Kalibi 34 that much space. Look at all the congestion. It, it's like rush hour traffic, this game. Kalibi got a foot on it. Desmond now heads it back to him, but Claxon beats him to it. Not only keeps it in, but gets it to Lynn. Lynn switching fields. How about that ball all the way to Lorig? Wow, what a pass by Lynn, and here comes Lorig. Up, oh, but the ball cleared out by Kagan. Kalibi. Here comes Adamson. Up the mints. Good job by Kenny. Adamson again got his foot there. Adamson has been a thorn in uh, Swarthmore's side all game. Now Samuels will try to take it out from the left side. Desmond. Manos trying to give it, but how about Hecht? Another steal by Leo Hecht. Hecht was getting some work medically at, at halftime. He certainly looks fine here. Kagan tries to switch fields to Mintz. Kalibi took a shot that time, but couldn't keep the ball in. Framlet. I'll tell you what. Haynes 15 and 14 Nolan have just been solid in the back here today. And as we said that, <laughs> Kalibi almost had a chance. How about Farrell with the head ball with Cramblett coming right down on him, putting on the pressure? Yeah, they're going to call Lynn on that, on that foul. So it'll be the diplomats on the free kick. The ever-present Shea Adamson lining things up. Desmond, not marked. He's on the near the. He looks like he's going to run toward the far post. I think Hecht has an eye on him. Long ball and a job well done by Aaron Haft. No problem with that one. Kenny with a nice touch. How about that? Kenny and Caligari. That's nice. This is great work. And Ian Kagan came over that time and kicked the ball out of bounds. Stopping a momentary run by the Garnet. Oliver Claxon now with the throw. Cramble it back to him. Claxon on the cross. That ball actually was. Palathius made the steal that time. Cramblin with the head ball, but right there is Farrell. There's been no question Swarthmore's had the better chances here in half number two. Still scoreless, just under 34 minutes left. And those of you who've been watching each week, you know that there is no overtime in college soccer in any of the divisions this year. So the teams have more of a real sense of urgency. Sometimes teams would maybe sit back. Coming into the game is Jack Norrie who in his brief time in the first half, I, I thought made an impact, Ian Kagan. 
or excuse me, Philip Manos is out. Who are the diplomats? You're Franklin and Marshall. You want to get five Horowitz with a few more touches. He has not really gotten much here in the second half. There's Farrell with the big kick. Haynes couldn't quite head it out. Adamson, can he control it? Look at him. He's jumping up and still trying to control it. Desmond. And Galathius got rid of it and got the ball. And Hecht. Well, it's interesting. A little, little strategy by Swarthmore here. Garnett's going a little bit more long ball trying to beat Franklin and Marshall in transition. Farrell, we talked about him with the big foot. Here's Hecht in tight corners. Desmond, Samuels. Oh, great anticipation by Lorig. They were looking to go to Kalibi that time, and Lorig anticipated the pass. He's still up there. Look at him. He's going down the right flank. He was looking for Freddie Lynn, but that ball was cleared out of there by Miles Ryan. Kalibi. And he was looking to go to Horwitz, and, and to be honest, Maybe he had a better chance holding on to that ball and trying to take it a goal himself. I know I just got done saying they have to try to get Horowitz more touches, but that was a position where he, he, was, he was marked very, very tightly. Interesting decision that time by Miles Ryan. Could have gone back to Farrell, his keeper, elected to just go out of bounds. How about that steal that time by Nori? Desmond, there's Horowitz, finally gets a touch. And they're going to call Haynes for tripping Horowitz. And it's an interesting situation. Don't know if you can shoot it from here. It's about, oh, gee, it's about. 35, maybe 40 yards out even. But we know what kind of foot Adamson has. So we'll see how Shea does it. He's lining it up. It looked like someone in that scrum got a head ball on it, but not that much. And Caleb Aaron half making the easy play. That's a good choice by Aaron half going to Heck. Heck, that ball's intercepted. Here comes Mintz. Mintz. And how about that defensive play by Claxon? Kenny, Kenny, cutting in the middle now. Swarthmore fans calling for a foul that time. Haynes with the intercept. Haynes still up after he made the rush from his center back position. Galathius to Kenny. Kenny, Mince, Mince and Kenny battling. And actually, it was 23, Ryan getting his foot in there. Here comes Hecht. Hecht has that left side. Now he goes toward the middle. Looking for Cramblet. Cramblet with Samuels on him on the far side. Kalibi also came back as well. There's 
we have a stoppage of play. Dean Chong back into the game. Caligari went out, and he's getting some medical attention. Bless to Mushabe back into the game for Freddie Lynn. Lorig on the throw on the far side. Now that time, uh, Tumo Shabe jumped a little too early on that. And it'll be the Diplomats ball. <laughs> Kalathias trying to help the officials saying it was Swarthmore's side. They, they would have nothing to do with that. And by the way, Nathan Schlesinger back in the game. We saw him in the first half make some good plays and also some big, big throws. Cramblet. No. Nah. There's Dean Chung. He couldn't quite get it and cleared away by Miles Ryan. Bramblett stayed on it. And again, Kagan had to kick the ball out of bounds. It'll be Lorig on the throw. Swarthmore continues to put decent pressure. Claxon was looking to line that up, and Schlesinger just got his foot there to clear it away. Norrie gives it to Mintz, so Mintz will take the throw. You know, you're starting to see a few tired players out there, and I, we, we had said that there was a foul, it looks like, on, on the Garnet. We had said that... Uh, it's going to be tough to keep the pace that they had in that first half. So Miles Ryan will go back to his keeper. You can tell Farrell. <laughs> Farrell looks like he was once a field player. He has very good skills. Kenny tried to back heel that, and it did go off Nori, so it'll be a goal kick for the Garnet. Twenty-five thirty-eight left here in a scoreless second half. Swarthmore still looking for its first corner kick of the game. How about Adamson on that head? Yep. They call the foul on Nori a little bit too aggressive. Claxon comes up limping a little bit. It's been a very physical game. From all looks of it, a clean game, but a very physical game. To Mushabi, that's where the ball's going, but a little too far. Good idea by Haynes. A little too far, though. And Farrell. We'll try to bring it out with Kagan in the back. Kagan really been solid. And Claxon had to kick that ball because Nori 18 was charging at it. Manos back in the game and Owen Sobel also coming in for Franklin and Marshall.
through the chief offensive players, Koa Kalibi and Oscar Horwitz out of the game for Franklin and Marshall. So again, it'll be Samuels for the sixth corner kick for the Diplomats. But there's a lot of pushing around there in the goal. Shot that time by Ian Kagan off the garnet, so it'll be corner kick number seven. Yeah, there's a lot of physical play there, and, and referee Jeff Pansiera is saying, hey, guys, come on, got to cool it a little bit. Hit by Aaron half that time. And it'll be on the other side now, Philip Manos. Aaron Half gets a hand on it. Ball inside there, again cleared. Schlesinger got a head on it and he heads it again. It looked like Schlesinger got the goal on the head ball. So unofficially it is Nathan Schlesinger with the goal and the Diplomats take the one nothing lead. Well, you know, eventually those corner kicks would be taken advantage of by Franklin and Marshall. Twenty-one forty-eight left here in the second half. We'll get the official word on the goal, but it looked like Schlesinger on the head ball, a bouncing header. And they have given him the goal. So Nathan Schlesinger, the first-year player from Harrison City, PA, gets his second goal of the season. And the Diplomats lead it by a 1-0 score. a pretty advantageous position for Swarthmore now on the free kick. Will Nolan go for goal or will he try to get, I think Nolan's going to go for the goal here. We'll see. Oh, he doesn't. And that ball is headed out and we will have the first corner kick of the game for the Garnet. Sean Nolan with the corner. Ah, that went a little too far. How about Farrell with Haynes right there and Farrell still able to snare it?
battling now. Nolan gets it, and Haynes hits it away. Eight to one in corner kicks. Franklin and Marshall lead. But it's interesting. Yes, the Zips have had more corners, but I think Swarthmore's had some better runs here on goal. And now we're going to have a free kick. Adamson lining things up. Boy, Shea has played quite a game here today. And for having a one nothing lead, Franklin Marshall not sitting on it. They're sending almost everybody up here. Schlesinger almost got his head on that one. And again, Swarthmore facing that pressure in the defensive zone, and Mintz is the one that kicked it up there. Haynes makes a trap. He's going to have to go back to Aaron Half, back to Haynes. That's good work by Aaron Half. That wasn't an easy ball. Here comes Claxon. Heck, back to Haynes. Teams are trying to get control of it now. Haynes touched the ball but avoids the corner kick. Now again, they'll probably have Schlesinger take this throw. We saw what he can do there. Antonio Caligari comes back in the game for Brandon Cramblett. Caligari had some medical attention there. Glad to see that he's able to go back. This is going to be a long throw, or is it? Not, not quite as long. Hecked with the big clear. Yep, that's a ball that could be settled that time by Ryan. Kumoshabe. Must have uh, kicked it off because it's going to be Claxon on the throw. 17.02 left in the second half. Franklin and Marshall leads one to nothing. And a goal by Nathan Schlesinger. Desmond ready to come back in for F and M. He he's he's been a very active player here today. Nolan. And half tried to get the attack started again. Look at the pressure again. That's Slager 33 putting on that pressure. Look at the pressure though, and Slager gets it. Sobel, and he'll get a yet another corner ninth of the game. And with as good as the diplomats are in the air, this is dangerous as Samuels, Jordan Samuels will take this. We saw he's got that left footed end swinger coming in. Kalibi back into the game. He's right in the middle of the middle of the goal there. It looked like the last
Mathias got it. Adamson with the shot wide. That is a tough shot on a bouncing ball that way. Mat Matias Arbelize back into the game, and he'll replace Owen Sobel. Well, if you're Dan Wagner, the coach of uh, FNM, you have to be really happy with how your players off the bench have played here today. That ball kicked out again. Oh, we have a foul. So it'll be a free kick. For the Garnet, Haynes. You have to think that at this stage of the game with just under 14 minutes left, Haynes and Nolan are going to make more runs from those center back positions. Rothmore looking for that equalizer. Just too far is running that down was Cato Hakino. Hakino's a guy that has really given Coach Eric Wagner good minutes today off the bench. Claxon kept that ball in. How about the back heel by Caligari? Here comes Aquino. Galathius. Tumashabi. He's going toward the middle. There are a lot of blue shirts there. And he is taken down. It looked like Mintz was in there. And this is just outside the box. This is about 20 yards out. Uh, Caligari has to take himself out of the game. I hope he's all right. We had said before he was getting some medical attention. Cramblet back in. Nolan, that wall is nowhere close to being 10 yards. He's got to make him walk it off. And that's exactly what's happening. Again, you're you're uh, maybe a little more than twenty, maybe maybe twenty two yards out. Hecht is also there, so we'll see how they go about this. Maybe one stepping over the ball, the other making the kick. But you gotta go at the goal. You're too close. And he does that. But with the save is Farrell. Did a good job getting it on target, but a player is down. Joshua Slager, 33. Oh, no, no, it's not Slager. Excuse me. Slager's up there. I'm sorry. That was 13. That's Jordan Samuels. Well, the reason this game is so, so important is after this, Swarthmore has three, just three more Centennial Conference games. John Hopkins is in first, 4-0-1. FNM second, 3-0-2. Gettysburg's 2-1-2. By the way, all three of them nationally ranked. Muhlenberg, 2-1-2. Washington College, 2-1-2. Dickinson, 2-2-1. McDaniel, 1-2-2. And then you have Swarthmore, 1-3-1, along with Haverford, 1-3-1. Or sign is 0 and 5. So again, if, if if you're Swarthmore, the 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 games are are cut, are dwindling down. And Eric Wagner was talking about that Friday, saying, you know, we don't have that that much to go. So this is a very key game. All Swarthmore just plays Washington College at Dickinson and then Haverford to end the regular season. 
back to play here. Kalibi gets his foot on it, and how about that save by Aaron Half? As he was down on the ground, Kalibi just couldn't get a lot on there, but still it was a dangerous chance. Aaron Half keeping the Garnet in this game. Chong trying to get the ball out, and there's the ever-present Adamson. What a player he's been today. Nolan looking to go long ball. No go. Here comes Kalibi. Again, Kalibi making a run. Has Claxton right there. Kalibi with it. Oh, Claxton gets his foot on it as Kalibi was trying to do a little step over on him. Excellent play by Oliver Claxton. Chong with the long service inside there. Too far for Hakino, and, and Farrell was able to clear it away. But still pressure by the Garnet. Kagan running it down, but Farrell's right there. Farrell's second team all Centennial Conference a year ago. <coughs> As we mentioned before, he began his uh, soccer career in college at Division I Radford. In fact, he was all Big South as a freshman keeper. Didn't play as much the next year. Nolan keeps it in. How about Adamson again? Boy, the anticipation at 27, Adamson is, and then he just headed that ball. Palathius. Again, looking for Cramblet. Farrell, Cramblet still has it. Cramblet to Tumushabi. And off Farrell. And it's going to be a corner kick. What a chance for the Garnet. Now it looks like it's going to be a goal kick. Excuse me. Freddie Lynn coming back into the game for Galathius. Jack Norray also entering the game. He'll replace Philip Manos. So this is interesting now. They have Lynn and Tumashabe and Cramblet. So this is obviously an offensive look that Coach Eric Wagner is going for with just under nine minutes to go. Here in the second half, Franklin and Marshall holding on to a one nothing lead. Heck, couldn't quite control it. And Mintz, it's interesting. It looks like Franklin and Marshall almost every time now is trying to go long ball. More so to clear it out so Swarthmore doesn't have the ball in an offensive area, Galathius, Tumushabe, double teamed, and he gets out of it. How about this work by Hecht? Hecht, oh, and cleared away by Samuels that time on the header. Jordan Samuels. And Haynes made that play and cleared it back. Here comes Nolan. Bramblett has, has a little time. Slager. 
Mintz is like booming it every time he gets it. Mintz been very solid in the back here today. And that ball goes out. And Tashiro Kenny coming back into the game for Claxon again. This is another offensive move. So with Cramblet, Tumushabe, Lynn, and Kenny in there, there's a lot of offensive firepower in the game for this Swarthmore team, and we have a foul right here and a player down on the far end. See, that was Matthew Lorig, but he's up. So just inside midfield, it'll be Sean Nolan, 6.53 left in the second half. F&M leading it, 1-0. Go short the heck. Heck. Slager hit it. Palathias didn't have anywhere to operate, had to go back to Nolan. Oh, and how about that steal? That was Desmond that time making the big play. Oh, great work by Chong. He not only kept possession, took it outside, tried to hit Freddie Lynn there, wasn't able to do that. Farrell, he's not in a hurry. And, and Lynn realizing that maybe there could be a uh, little bit of stalling, Lynn went up there and made sure he picked that one up. Haynes on the header, but Adamson right back at him. Palathias. Run down there by Kagan. Kagan still has it. Kagan. Oh, got it back that time to Samuels. That's a nice play by Kagan. But still, the Garnet have it. Kenny. Ah, Kagan finally clears it away. As we said, F&M is not fooling around. If they, if they think there's any kind of pressure, they're just going to kick it out of bounds, even if it means giving possession to the Garnet. Here's Tumo Shabe. Adamson that time, and he's taken down. We're going to get a card on Tumo Shabe. I think that may be a frustration yellow. Two yellows apiece that we have here today. Adamson, a little too far. Well, we're at the five-minute mark left here in the second half. Franklin Marshall with a 1-0 lead over Swarthmore. Nolan to Lorig. Lorig all the way on the right side. He's got Samuels to beat. Nope, gets it back, and Cramblett could not control it. And again... F&M is just clearing it out. They're saying, we don't, we don't care. We'll give you possession. Kenny just above midfield. He's pretty bunched up here. He's trying to look for a white shirt. Can't find one. They have to go back to Nolan. They're going to Lorig on the right side. Can he keep it in? Nope. It'll be a goal kick. Schlesinger and Sobel back into the game for F&M. Arbelize and Desmond out. We've said it a couple times, but Coach Dan Wagner who's in his 21st season, has to be happy uh, with what he has received from his bench, not, not just because Schlesinger came off of it to score his second goal of the season, but 
been a lot of good players who have given some minutes. Nori, there's just been several of them. Farrell will let that one go. You have to wonder. I mean, F and M it, it seems content just to kick it out of bounds whenever there's any kind of trouble, not worrying about possession. You have to wonder if you if you give Swarthmore too many chances, but with just three twenty seven left, time's running out. Sobel did a good job, but how about Haynes getting it now? Haynes up, oh, there's Adamson. You've got to do a lot to get the ball away from him. And again, just Desmond just clears it. Not really looking for the pass. Just kind of clearing out of harm's way. Mintz on the header. There's Adamson. He's got some time now. He was looking to chip at that time. To Kalibi. Out come the Garnet. Calathius gets the rebound that time. Kenny to Mushabi. Look at all the blue shirts that converge when he gets the ball. Chong couldn't quite control it, and again, just cleared away by Kalibi. Lori. Nori on it. Now that's still going to be F and M ball. Carson Litzinger, a first year player from State College PA, into the game. And here's Schlesinger. Will he try? He didn't try last time for the big throw. Doesn't look like he is this time either. No. Nope. Headed out by Haynes. Now he might now because he's a little closer. Just under two minutes to go. Now he's not still going long ball. He's trying to. There's Kalibi. If he gets out of this, <laughs> that will be something. It's interesting. There are hardly any blue shirts going toward the goal. That's why he's not making the long throw. The only person there is Sobel. And now he's come close to him. Yeah, they're calling a foul throw on that one. So it'll be Haynes, but the clock stands at 127 left. Again, Schlesinger really had time to settle that. It was just Schlesinger and Nori, the teammates around the ball. But again, FNM just taking no chances. Here comes Kalathius. He's made some dangerous runs. He's trying to hit Tumashabe. But Farrell gets there. Farrell anticipated that play actually before it even got underway. He was way out of his goal. There's a foul that time, so it'll be a free kick. Oh, and we have a yellow. On the foul. Was that on Heck? Either way, third yellow for Swarthmore. Nori's just trying to keep possession there. Look at 18. He's just trying to keep possession. There's Heck. Only 19 seconds left. Heck is going to have to get a long ball here. Tries to go to Tumushabe. Tumushabe has it. And cleared away by Adamson again. Sobel with the kick, and that'll do it. So 
were the 18th ranked Franklin and Marshall diplomats come here to Swarthmore and come away with a one to nothing victory. FNM improving to 9-1 and 4 on the season. 5-0 oh, and 1 in the Centennial Conference. Swarthmore dropping a 6-5 and 3 and more importantly 1-4 one, and 1. And with just 3 Centennial Conference games left. Swarthmore may have to win out in, in order to try to get one of the six Centennial Conference playoff spots. Remember, this is the first year that they're having six teams. Before that, it, 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 was, it was five. Five teams. So, Swarthmore on Wednesday night will host Washington College. Then next Saturday is at Dickinson. And then closes out its season the following Saturday at home against Haverford. FNM will be back in action Tuesday at home against Haverford. Well, it was an, an exciting game. Uh, we talked about the first half pace was, was just incredible uh, for both sides. It was, it was just incredible. And FNM got a good contingent here. Being applauded by its fans. So again, uh, uh, really some, some tremendous soccer here. The final score, once again, Franklin Marshall won and Swarthmore nothing. Stay tuned because this evening at 7 o'clock, the same two teams will be playing in women's soccer, and we'll have all the action for you. But for now, Mark Narducci saying that final score once again, Franklin Marshall won, Swarthmore nothing. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you back here this evening.